let's now look at the forces that act on an aircraft in flight and expand this out into a discussion about how we can vary the magnitude of these forces and how we can use that variance to generate the accelerations that we require to manoeuvre an aeroplane. You'll recall from our earlier discussion about Newton's first law that a body at rest will tend to stay at rest unless acted on by an external force, or indeed a body in motion will continue to move in a straight line at a constant speed unless acted on by an external force. An aircraft in flight has the following four forces as the primary influences on its direction in flight. The weight of the aeroplane, that is the mass multiplied by g, gravity, will always act towards the centre of the earth. Lift generated by the wings will counter the effects of weight and enable us to fly. Thrust from the engines will drive us forwards and counter drag which tends to slow us down. Whilst the aeroplane is in straight, level, unaccelerated flight, these forces will all be in equilibrium. So thrust will equal drag, lift will equal weight, and the aeroplane will not speed up, slow down, or manoeuvre other than to fly in a straight line at a constant speed. If, however, we were to increase the magnitude of one of these forces, for instance, to advance the throttles and increase the thrust being generated by the engines, the thrust vector would be larger than the drag vector and we would feel an acceleration of the aeroplane which is manifested by the aircraft speeding up. Equally, if we were to increase the magnitude of the lift vector, it would now be larger than the magnitude of the weight vector and so the aeroplane would start to accelerate in terms of a manoeuvre which uh, saw the aircraft going up. So now let's take each of these forces in turn and expand into the details of how we generate them and how we can influence them in order to give us the forces that we require to manoeuvre an aircraft.